Um, it's great to see so many faces. I know many I don't yet. Um, and I am just thrilled to be here this weekend, not only with those of you who are attending, but um, with this fabulous crew of people who are here to present. I was just saying to somebody, but the people who registered for this conference, you don't know what a great deal you're getting because there is <laughs> some serious talent in the house this weekend. And um, basically, I just got to play at a conference where I brought all the people who I wanted to hear talk. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we are so thrilled that they are here. Lots more folks are actually going to be joining us tomorrow. Friday night is not very time for lots of people after a long work week. But um, we're going to start out tonight with a little bit of singing and some worship and then some panel conversation. Um, the spirit of this weekend is engagement and deepening. And so um, you will notice that this is not a super scripted conference. This is not one in which we're going to be reading to you off of podiums and putting things up on a whole lot of flip charts. Um, in large part because I think that the kind of conversations we're going to have this weekend don't happen enough. Um, we don't get a chance to build those connections across congregations, across denominations. Um, we don't get to both take in the input from really smart people, but then also engage with it and provide our own. And so my hope is that this is spiritually and politically generative for all of us who are here. Um, so a couple of very quick housekeeping things, and then I know what everybody is really waiting for. <laughs> we have uh, we are sharing the space tonight with a group of folks from Honor the Earth, which is a, an amazing indigenous-led organization. Um, Winona LaDuke is in the house tonight, oh, so I can't believe you're even here in this room. <laughs> um, we uh, were initially planning on being in the social hall downstairs, and then there was a little bit of a snafu uh, with the scheduling, and so they asked if we could be in here. So we're going to just have to fill up this big space with our spirits and presence, and I trust everybody to be able to do that well. Um, but you will also know that there are other folks in the building, so we're going to... Um, just be respectful of them, as I'm sure they will be of us. There are, uh, there's an elevator through these doors if you need help getting from floor to floor and don't like those stairs. Uh, there are both uh, single gender uh, bathrooms, gender neutral bathrooms, on the next floor down from us. We are on floor four right here. Floor three has Classrooms, there are some of our workshop spaces will be there. There are single stall restrooms there. Um, there are also single stall restrooms tomorrow in the chalice room, which is down on the, the first floor. Um, our reception space this evening is called the Cummings Room, and that is, that's on the first floor as well. Um, I'm trying to think of any other things. I think we're good on the announcement. There's a lot of information in your packets. Um, please hang on to those. Uh, you're welcome to leave them here overnight and get another one in the morning if you're somebody who like me loses paper, like it's your job. Um, I want to just draw your attention to something which I believe is on. Sean's going to help me here. Um, on page four, uh, I have here some suggested guidelines for cross-cultural conversations and dialogue. These come from a number of sources that have sort of been compiled and worked, but um, I don't want you all to spend your whole night with your noses in these guidelines, but the idea of these is that every conversation that we have is a cross-cultural conversation, right? <laughs> Those of you who have a sibling who is really different from you, who grew up in the same house, know that just because we grew up with the same circumstances does not mean we always share assumptions and cultures, right? Um, so these are just some, uh, they, they were developed by a, a, a collective of um, black Southern women in, I believe, the 1990s, um, who formed a collective called New Visions Incorporated, and they've been adapted a little bit since then. Um, but those folks were working, trying to intentionally create multiracial, cross-class, multi-gender dialogues. And these are sort of crystallizations of their learnings about best practices. So um, the one that I really want to encourage us all to, to try this weekend is the, the very first one, try on ideas. This one is hard for me. 
uh, I'm often really ready to, to rebut or to argue or to add something as I'm listening or not really listening because I'm getting ready. Um, so I want to really encourage us, we're going to hear, I asked folks to bring their sort of edgiest, most radical political selves as presenters this weekend. I asked them to really push us. And that means that there may be some things which are not entirely comfortable, that are not always familiar. Um, and so I'm going to ask us to be in a space in the spirit of experimentation, holy prophetic experimentation, because uh, as far as I'm concerned, the models that we have known and used are not working right now in the world. And so I'm open to new things. And I want to hear some, some wisdom and creative vision. So welcome to the space. I'm so glad you're here. Um, you are also welcome to fill in over here. Uh, we're going to be singing and moving a little bit. So um, if you don't want to feel like you're up on the risers, you're welcome to fill in over here as well. I'm going to hand it over to Glenn Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> it's, um, it, it's hard to tell these these days what time of day it is. And I'm so glad that I'm a part of any part of this particular day. Um, how many of you, show of hands, uh, are there any good singers in the room? 